It's your mic. What's up? What it do? So, all right. So, we are here on our 20 year. Hey, guys. What it do? What it do? Kind of excited to be here with my boo. <laughs> People said it wasn't going to come true. And here we are. So, what it do? We're on 20 year two zero. I just don't know what to say, so I'm just going to let you lead and you uh, can start this thing. I gotta blink it on because it's cold in here, so I'm snuggly, Facts wuggly is. over here. A little chilly. Um, babe, thank you. I'm sorry by saying thank you. Thank you to my wife. Thank you to my girlfriend. <laughs> thank you to my best friend. Thank you to my sneaky link. <laughs> I used my sneaky link for a little minute. We I like did that. have a sneaky link period. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for my first kiss. Lost my virginity. She took her. She took my virginity. She took it. I didn't give it to her. She took that shit. <laughs> I gave mine to to you as well, so it was a fair trade. You gave it to me, or you forced it on me. You made you were like you gonna take this pussy, boy. Oh wow! <laughs> Just joking. So, how do you feel about it? Well, we did chat a little bit yesterday about it. So I guess kind of pick up where we left off, maybe. That was yesterday, sweetheart. I cannot remember how that conversation <laughs> where it left off. And we've done so many podcasts between then. I think we should just start over fresh. Okay. Um, so, yeah. I'm Lupe. I'm Mecha. And this is our 20-year anniversary podcast. So in 20 years, I guess the question is, what have you learned in 20 years of being with somebody consistently, or for the most part, consistently? What have I learned? Man, you come in with questions that I wasn't prepared for. (laughs) Mm -mm. Um, What have I learned from being with someone that for that long? That's that's your question? Yeah. Or should Um, I say, yeah, what have you learned and what advice could you give somebody who's looking to have a long-term relationship like this? I think everybody's goal is to find somebody that they can have a relationship like this with. Um, and, cha- you know, I think that's what the whole goal of of us being here on this earth is. So I guess more of the question is, because that's kind of two different questions. Okay, my bad. Um, what, what, makes, what makes a relationship successful to where it does last 20 years plus? True. Is that kind of what you were... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what what is it? What do you think has made us? Let's put it like that. Then what, what's, what do what's you think has made us? us successful over these past twenty years? I think that um, our willingness to go through different experiences together, to try to be open, even if maybe we weren't okay with certain things at first, the idea of certain things at first. Um, so the the willingness and openness to try new to try new experiences and go through different scenarios and situations like when we took a break, um, like a real break from our relationship, like when we got into the lifestyle and and tried something new and it was new and scary and crazy, but we did it together. So I I think that that is always going to be something for us that we're always trying new things and trying new experiences and that keeps it from being stagnant. I like that. I I would have to say I agree. I think – both of our tastes for adventure and like learning new things and actually like experiencing and trying new things. I think that really is some of the glue that bonds us together. I mean, not only the fact that we've been in each other's lives now for 20 years, 20 years (laughs) through three different phases of our lives. Yeah. Our teens, our twenties and now our thirties. Facts. And more counting and becoming parents together. 
Yeah. And becoming adults together, basically. I mean, we've basically went through so many different. Yeah. Different experiences. Facts. Different phases in our own lives and our own personal journeys, independent of each other. It's crazy to think that we're still here, still rocking. And people say that it's impossible. It's not impossible. You have to have persistence and you have to you have to want to work at things. And I think that society nowadays is just so okay with saying, well, I don't like this about a person or I'm not trying to put the work in, so I'm out. I'm on to the next. Yeah. And that's you can see that through the number of divorces that there are, the number of people that just go from part- partner to partner, relationship to relationship. Facts. And they aren't happy. It's because you've you haven't been with a person. Maybe you haven't been with a person that you're willing to put the work in for, or you just don't know that you can do that. That that is an option. Facts. And that it's worth it. So do you think? At, so do you remember the year when you knew that? Like, all right, I'm doing it with him. No matter what, we about to rock it. We finna make this shit work. And he was like, that. That's <laughs> I'm marrying that right there. That's. Like the first time I felt like that, when when you just knew, like you were like, yeah, it, it was a long time ago. It was in the beginning, in the first year. The first year. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Well, I ain't trying to well, challenge okay. you in that. I, you know, I, I said I love you. You looked at me like I would do, but you. Like, I mean, that was two weeks into our relationship, but I, like I once I started was at the time I was a teenager, and once I started going head to head with my parents, it was it was one of those things where it was like. If I'm willing to go this hard now, then I must really want to be with this person. Like, there's no, like, that was, now looking back, I'm like, it really wasn't that crazy what I was going through. But at the time, as a teenager, that's like your whole world. Facts. It, exploding, imploding, whatever. And that's when I was like, I'm, I'm doing this. Like, I care about this person. This is what I want. And I'm going to fight for it. Facts. Facts. So I would say the, f- not that it like has to keep happening in your brain, but like that was the first time that, that I felt that way. I feel that. I feel that. I remember when, <laughs> I remember we went to the baseball field and I was like, we were chilling. And I remember we kissed. 20 years ago, a couple of days ago. <laughs> right. I remember being at a baseball field and we were just cuddled up. And, I, and you were just, I don't remember exactly what we were talking about. I just remember the feeling of being cuddled up with you. I remember the feeling, too. And I was like, man, this feels good. Like, I'm trying to do this every day. <laughs> and it was cold <laughs> out, and we're all snuggly. hmm And then I remember, like, giving you a kiss and then leaving and getting my parents' truck. And when you walking back, I remember watching you walk back to the window of the truck as we pulled off. And I was like, man, I'm in love. It was. It's like a feeling like I'm at home. Yeah. Like, like this is a familiar place, but it's not, but it is. Exactly. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. I mean, we've always had, well, I've always had that feeling. I always thought, like, yeah, this is, this is it. That's crazy. 20 years. <laughs> First time hearing that one. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's cool. I think, I think, I, I think being in a relationship and our relationship morphing and transforming into what it is because we just refuse, not just refuse to let it die, but like, we wanted it to work you know what I mean and because we wanted it to work because we saw so much of each other I think that that part was vitally important because like there's no way that you're gonna be with somebody for 20 years and not get annoyed and not get bored and not get upset and not get angry I think I think our greatest like our, I think our greatest asset to our relationship is our ability to argue <laughs> our ability to argue and I say that because if you can't argue with somebody successfully and still be okay with them the next morning, even if it was an intense argument, there's I I have a three day rule with everything in my own head. Like I don't impose that three day rule on anybody else. But three days, we can argue for two of those days. But by the third day, I'm exhausted. I I'm ready to wave the white flag. <laughs> if she's still standing at day three about this damn argument, then everybody's suffering in the house. Okay, <laughs> everybody. But I know that whatever she's standing on for three days means something. You know what I mean? But it took time for me to learn that, you know? But I think that ability to argue 
and then see try to see where the person's coming through from that argument i think is like one of the most vitally important things in a relationship because you're you're with somebody who's a completely different individual has completely different hormones has a completely different view on life um just by proxy because she's a woman or he's a man you're gonna view things differently you know what i mean so with that being said there's gonna be disagreements and knowing how to deal with those disagreements in a constructive way sometimes comes with arguments some people don't argue at all but for us personally i think learning to argue was a healthy thing for us because we argued but and we would fight about it but by the end of that third day we all no matter what it is we always come back and talk about it and i think we've always been brutally honest with each other <laughs> that's for damn sure like <laughs> that's i mean damn. maybe there was a few times and it probably probably more around the time that we took a break where we weren't we weren't totally on the same page and like just saying everything that we felt but like i would say i would say as of <sighs> Since then, we do say how we feel, and uh, maybe up. it's maybe it's because I'm like I'm not afraid of us not working out. I'm not afraid of us you going anywhere. Like I know you're here to stay, and I'm going to say what I have to say, and I'm be honest, and we're going to get this out, and then we'll be done with it. Facts. And I think that so many people are so afraid to actually hash out the real shit. I think a lot of guys and know. females have a problem accepting the real shit. So it's one thing to hash it out, you know what I mean? Because we're all good at dishing it. But sometimes you got to shut the fuck up and take it. And sometimes I'm wrong. And I'll get and i fight to, to the nail and be wrong. But then on that third day, I'm like, all right, you got a point. I felt like this isn't this, but you had a point. And I was wrong. And that has to come sometimes. That has to come a lot of yeah, times if you're, you're wrong. wrong. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think and that, that can be hard too, but it can. It, and it's it the thing is, I think a lot of people get misconstrued that admitting that you're wrong is some form of weakness is not when it's the person that you love and you feel like you've hurt them. You know what I mean? And every relationship is different, so every relationship has its own boundaries. But there has to be a level of trust and openness in that relationship in order for you to feel vulnerable to admit that you were wrong. Because there is some point of ridicule that's going to come with that. There's going to be some type of sarcasm. There's going to be something that comes with that in some way, shape, or form at some point because of your actions. And you have to be willing to sit on that into the future and until it dies off and it's not a thing anymore. And that sucks because nobody wants to sit with egg on their face, especially when they make a mistake with the person that they love. But if the person that you love really truly loves you they're going to be okay with you making that mistake they're going to realize and they're not going to throw it in your face every single day that doesn't happen you know what i mean and i think we've gotten really good about acknowledging when we're throwing shit in each other's faces and being like hey we don't you I, you've made your point and you do it with me because i'm extremely sarcastic a lot and you're like all right you made your point Shut fuck up i get it and i'm like all right okay yeah but i, I think i need to hear that because some people would just sit there and just take it not knowing that it's 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 hitting a boiling point, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't let I don't just take shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I think what's <coughs> interesting about us is we're so polar opposites on so many things, but then we're we're identical in other ways. Like, we are both stubborn. We are both gonna stand up for what we believe. We are both hard headed and determined, and don't want to lose. Facts. So it's like there's that aspect of it. So I think that helps us, in, at least in our relationship, because we do understand that about each other. It's not the situation where, like, I know some people are non-confrontational and they, the one, the one partner will be yelling about whatever, arguing, and the other person's just not even responding, not even. We we'll go back and forth. We. There's no fear. <laughs> no, nah, I don't. I think in a healthy relationship, I don't think you can have fear. I think you have to respect your partner 100 percent to be 100 percent. True. In a healthy relationship, yeah. I think that that's necessary. So if you're not gonna be 100 percent, 100 percent, then it's not. There's no sense in committing to something that's lifelong because a lifelong commitment means being 100 percent, 100 percent, even when it's hard to be 100 percent. Yeah, I fucked up. Yeah, I did that. Now you have to make a decision. Now that I did that. Or, yeah, I fucked up and I fucked up this and I wasn't listening and I made this mistake or I went and did this and did this here and you got to stand in that shit. 
yeah. and become a better person. Because I think, I think anybody can come in. I think anybody who's willing to work on a relationship can come back from anything. I could, I agree. Yeah, because we've been through a lot of things. Oh yeah, I was a fuck boy. And we're still standing. I was a fuck boy. Yeah, yeah, we're in my. T- I mean, I, we were kids too. I was in my twenties. I was a fuck boy. <laughs> I was, I was out there just you know being Lupe, a hey, Lupe. That's true. That's where the name came. Fresh out of high school, Lupe. Kick push ass nigga. So we def. Sorry, this thing is. No, you're good, babe. Falling off of my head, and it's driving me absolutely nuts. Okay. Absolutely nuts. But yeah. So, I mean, that's, I feel like that's kind of a little glimpse into our relationship. I know that a lot of people, uh, maybe not a lot of people, I feel like there are some people that when we, maybe they don't know us that well and they hear us kind of like go back and forth about something silly, they don't realize that we have grown up together. And I don't, not that we're brother and sister, but sometimes we go back and forth like that. We definitely And do. that's just our process. It's not, it's not a negative thing. Sometimes we just talk shit. It just is what it is. Our house but is that Sparta. Has, that is how it's worked for us. Our house is fucking Sparta. That is our house. In our house, we are Spartans. Our child is a Spartan. The queen is a Spartan. I am a Spartan. We are Spartans in our house. We don't play that shit. That's true. Like you, <laughs> you're right. That's exactly why we get along so well for 20 years. So, honestly, what advice would you give a couple that is coming into their? They've been together for for a minute, and they're like, "Hey, you know, we're we're hitting that." 11, 12 year market starting to get a little boring. We want to spice it up. You know, kids are a little bit older now. They can stay with the parents. They're in, you know, seven and eight phases where they're not completely crazy and, you know, it works. We can we can go away. Well, like, what do you think would be your advice to them at this at that point in their lives? Because we've been there. So when, when I would say mm, that there has to be some new experiences and new adventures in your life, whatever that means. That could be getting in the lifestyle. That could be trying new restaurants. That could be going to new places. That could be finding new sports, no, new activities that you guys can share. But it's the reason that you're bored or stagnant is because you're doing the same thing all the time. You've got to mix it up. You've got to change things. You've got to experience new things. We are not put on this earth for however long your life is to just do the same thing for the rest of your life. Facts. You're not going to grow mentally. You're you're not going to advance. It, you've got to challenge yourself. And for each person, that's something different. Like I said, it could be something as simple as we go to a different restaurant or we hung out with a new friend or just new experiences in all realms. I like that. And it could be going to the lifestyle because that's fun too. <laughs> so with that being said, we'll segue into that. Because a lot of people think that you can't have a healthy relationship and be in the lifestyle and have multiple partners that that's not like, oh, that, you know, you just can't do it. It's not going to work. Somebody's going to get jealous. Somebody's going to leave. Da, 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 da. You know, the, the rhetoric goes on and on. And I mean, I know personally, it's, I think it's enhanced, enhanced our relationship in some places. And I think in other places, it may have pulled things back a little bit. Um, but I definitely think that the bad definitely don't do any sort of close to outweighing the good. The good is like so much between the people that we've met, the experiences that we've had, the places that we've seen, the the interactions that we've had with the people that we've met and the places that we've seen yeah. have been incredible. And we've made lifelong friends that we've been able to be more open with, I feel, than people that we've known for a lifetime. Very true. Very true. It's, it's, for, well, at least for us, being in the lifestyle, it's like the friends that we have in the lifestyle, I feel like we can be more of ourselves around them fully, like our whole self, than we can with just our normal friends. And that's because you're getting a very intimate piece of that person. Um, 
but you had a question. What was your question? What do you, like, do you think that the lifestyle has enhanced our relationship and how do you view it? And I mean, it absolutely has. We've, We've gone through a lot of new experiences. We've met a lot of people. You kind of answered your question, I think. Yeah, from my perspective. I'm sorry. I, was, I meant to get your perspective after that. Like, what do you think? How do you feel the lifestyle has impacted our relationship as a whole? I think it's, I mean, I feel the same way that you do. I, it's enhanced it. Um, I, but what I will warn, it there are always some things that you're going to have to deal with. You're going to have to go through. So... If you're looking to do something like that, you are there. There's no situation, not no situation. There's no time that. How to explain what I'm trying to say? Um, there will be jealousy, at some point. It is something you will have to deal with. It is a normal human emotion. Right. So, I'm not saying that we didn't deal with that, and that it doesn't still come up from time to time. In 20 years, it it still does. But knowing that you are in this with your partner and you, whatever you encounter, you're in it together and you're going to figure it out. That That's really what it's about. So for people to go into the lifestyle thinking they're not going to be dealing with any of those things, no, you absolutely are going to. Like there's no, there's no getting around that, but that's part of the process. And you have to take a little bit of the bad for it to be as good as it could be. Facts. And understanding and accepting jealousy is a part of life. It, 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 people are like, oh, you shouldn't be jealous. You shouldn't be jealous. Yeah, right. The reason you see the dude in a Ferrari, you look over and you're like, man, I, w- I would like to have a Ferrari. You may not be envying him completely, but you would like to have that Ferrari. You know what I mean? Um, so in the lifestyle, that definitely does happen, you know? And I think that knowing how to deal with it in 20 years has been miraculous because although we may have a feeling of jealousy for a moment or something like that, it's not going to be something that's going to ruin the entire night event wherever we're at you know it's like okay feel some type of way or i may not have liked how that felt all right now i'm gonna go talk to him about it or talk to her about it and we like hey you know this happened i didn't really like it um is it something that we can prevent in the future like what happened and we get a clear concise like understanding of what happened because it might be something that you know is something that could happen again and not really be in either of our controls or it's something that can be easily you know okay hey we're not gonna do that and just having that line of communication Literally took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say that goes in line with just having that good communication, which is extremely important in a relationship that you want to be long lasting, one. And two, even more important for the lifestyle, because if you're not communicating with your partner in every in every instance, you're not going to know where they stand. You don't know if they're enjoying themselves or if they even want to do this anymore. You have to continue to have conversations. And that's. I feel like the biggest piece to it. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Communication. <laughs> that is, that's huge. I think communication is the biggest piece probably. And that goes along with that. Learning how to argue. Learning when not to argue is also <laughs> just as important. And just communicating in general. And willing to work at your relationship. Yeah, work at communicating. Being a great communicator goes so much further into developing a great relationship because the better you are communicating and and listening i think and listening i was gonna say that listening (coughs) is just as important and i'm not perfect at that (laughs) but (laughs) but we all have things to work on and that's (laughs) one of mine (laughs) hey i i've seen you try i've literally watched you try I've, I've seen it and i know what's going on and i appreciate you for doing that and it'll it gets easier, <laughs> it gets easier. hi thank you i needed to hear that <laughs> i love you, <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> that's that's life 20 years from now like i said we're brutally honest with each other all the time we're we one thing i think is really important at least in our relationship <clears throat> Is that we enjoy each other's company. We <laughs> laugh, have fun, we joke, we talk shit. All the time. It's just <laughs> always something going on. And it's a lot of fun. We we make it a lot of fun. And yeah. I think if you're with someone and you're not having fun, what are you guys doing? 
Yeah, what you are should you? enjoy yourself, whatever that is. But like, you should be able to be, be a little playful and exactly. I personally feel like you should take a small interest into whatever your partner likes, just a small interest in whatever they're doing. So, personally, I do this in twenty years. I learned to do this right. So really? she and I'm, she's gonna find out the secret right now. This is the sauce. Oh gosh. So she watches these shows on Netflix Lifetimes and she'll watch like several episodes. It'll be like a season. Um didn't did you watch Orange is the New Black? Yeah, like long, long ago. Long, long time ago. Yeah. So this is when I learned it. This is how long ago I've been doing this, right? So I learned I don't give two peanuts about these shows. But if I can give her one or two episodes, right? To learn the characters in the show so I know who's who. Right. Almost like her job. Right. So when she's at work and she had all these people, there, these are all characters. So I would learn who's who so that when she's folding clothes or we're in the car and she's talking about an episode, I know exactly who she's talking about. Right. And then I can listen more intently and put the story together and know exactly what's happening because I had those two episodes under my belt. Not only that, but those two episodes are also cuddle time. So that's also a bonus because now I got cuddle time <laughs> credit. I got a cuddle time credit and. I know who these people are that she's talking about because at one point when you were watching Orange is the New Black and you were working, I had no idea sometimes which person you were talking about, whether they were a work person or it was an <laughs> Orange is the New Black person. I was lost sometimes, so I had to make sure I was on my P's and Q's. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. That was a while ago. <laughs> that was a while ago. I never forgot that experience because that's when I realized because it worked because you, so, you were so contented when I would come lay in the bed with you with a bottle of wine and sit there with popcorn and watch this show with you. And I was like, this is this is all she needs right here. You haven't gotten in on any other shows like that. Bridgerton. No, no. Hold on. I got two episodes of Bridgerton. What, that what? French movie. I got at least three episodes no, in there. No, I was going to say that. <laughs> Hold on. Interrupting. What I was going to say was, is you like to come in when I'm like, because I usually put something on when I'm like doing a task. Folding clothes, cleaning the house, do, like doing something. So I was watching this like uh, Versailles was the show's name. A French. It was. It's. It's about the city of Versailles in France, but it's scandalous <laughs> as can be, and it's about scandalous. Louis the Louis the fifth or something. One of the, the Louis something from long ago, but. He would pop in for like five minutes and be like, well, what's going on? And it would always be the most scandalous part. So I would have to tell him about it. And then days later, he'd be like, so what happened with this? Oh, wait, there's more that's going on. So he'd like pop in for a few minutes and it would be fun because he'd be into it. But he wasn't actually like watching it, but he kind of knew what was going on. So it was fun. Always. So you do still kind of do that, but you do it in a, in a quicker way. Yeah. Because I have to, Way. Let you, yeah. Because as as a as a good husband, and as somebody who wants to be a part of your life, and I want you to know that I care, I have to care about what you have going on. Even if you give no fucks about what I have going on, I as a man That's have to care. That's not true. No, I I'm, do. You do. I, I just do. said I am saying even if you didn't, I would still do that. But you do. I feel like we do the same thing for each other yeah. because it'll be something like oh, how was that game? Or how was this that you were, whatever it is that you're doing. She records every one of my basketball games on my Snapchat. And that means the world to me. I do. I have my <laughs> own ESPN analyst out there. And then she goes back with and tells me. With the highlights. With the only. highlights. Only yeah. the highlights. <laughs> only the highlights. She only puts up the ESPN sports highlights. She never puts up the bad games. <laughs> well, sometimes I'll save some stuff for yeah. him to review later. And she will review that. She'll be like, what were you doing on this floor? What were you looking? Like, this man backdoored the shit out of you. What were you doing? I'm like, damn. That's true. Facts. And I do cheer at every game. You do. If I miss a game, it's like I'm either deathly ill or I'm The only game she ever missed. I missed a couple. No, the only game that you truly missed. That was out of town. That you were out of town. I know, and you won. It was my championship the game. Finals. I'm so. Finals. I'm still so sad. I missed that. But we won. Okay, we're not gonna talk about that game because I didn't have such a good game. I had a chance to win it. Two free throws. No time left, and I missed both of them. But you guys won. But we still won. Yeah, no, nah, I went. I went. For, what three for three in overtime? So I wasn't fucking off in overtime. I, I felt that shit. 
So but I guess that goes along with what you were saying. Yeah, sorry. Show, no, no, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Showing interest in what your partner is interested in. That doesn't yeah. mean that he likes basketball. That doesn't mean I have to all of a sudden know everything about it. But to keep asking questions and being involved and and putting effort into it, then that shows that I care. Yeah, definitely. And definitely. it's something we can talk about and I can learn about. It's true. It's so definitely it's true. The same Vice versa, doing that for your partner. Heck yeah, definitely. I think that's something that anybody can take. And it just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of uh, paying attention, putting your phone down, <clears throat> kind of listening and being engaged with your partner. <clears throat> I think that that's, 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 a, that's a thing. That's a thing. I know you always... Putting your phone down. I know. Finishing a sentence before you go on your phone again. <laughs> be Those are it. wonderful things that women love. I know, and I'll be. And I've been working, been, been working on it, I but have. he's not as successful as I would like him to be. No, I'm not. I'm not as attentive as I used to be um, when I worked a normal job, um, because and I know why. We spend a lot more time together, well, and it's no working, excuse. And, you're and I and I work a lot on my phone. No, you are. Um, but I, I have made a conscious effort in 2023 to put my phone down and spend more time just staring at her beautiful face. Um, and talking to her and making sure that we're completely engaged no matter what we have going on, no matter how many engagements we have or meetings and things like of that nature and stuff. So it's it's been it's been better. I think I've got Oh yeah, that. no, it has. You know? And that's another thing, like being one hundred percent with each other, like, hey, you're neglecting me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to be here with me now, present. It's true. <laughs> fuck the money, fuck all that other shit. <laughs> Well, you're notorious for like starting a sentence <laughs> and you get my undivided attention and you leave the sentence hanging in the air and never get back to it. Because between the three or four words you said and the rest of the sentence, somebody has texted you and initiated a new conversation <laughs> that couldn't wait two seconds. I'm so sorry. I'm like, why do you do this to me? So now. I it, I have to evaluate. Like, now I evaluate. I'm like, do I really care what the rest of that sentence was? Where was he going with that? Was it important? Like, do I care? Okay, I just don't feel like caring right now. So I'm not even going to ask. I'll wait for him to tell me hours later when he just <laughs> remembers to tell me. <laughs> or if I'm like, I really gave you all my attention, then I'm like, hey, what was the rest of that? Yeah, facts. So, but I don't do that every time because that is exhausting. Oh, well, see, and that's... <laughs> Learning to work with each other, right? Le- there. Learning. Well, I guess that goes into the next topic that I didn't even think of. Being with someone for 20 years, there are going to be things that annoy you. And some of those things, you're just like, you have to learn to just be okay with them. That is who they are. My husband will start a sentence <laughs> and then get distracted. And sometimes it really annoys me, but... Other times I just let it go because I'm like, what? There's no point of, there's no point. There's no point of arguing (laughs) it. There's just not. He is this person. I love you for that. I I love you too, baby. Oh, I know. Some of the little things that they do, you just gotta. That's true. There's things that you just gotta let go. No, no, it doesn't hurt to say a couple times. Hey, babe, I don't like this. But yeah. if if it's if it's really drastically hard for them to change that that thing, whatever that thing I mean, is, it's never hard. It's no, like no, no, she does well, great things. Like she no, no, purposely uses our this. daughter's bathroom first thing in the morning. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> you gotta let it go. That's some of the things you gotta just, just let it go. True, it's true. If you see that they are trying, but it's just not changing. What <laughs> other things that are easier for them to change? And they're like, oh, I didn't even know that annoyed you. Oh, I can fix that real quick. Then then yeah. that's worth Hell yeah. That's worth the conversation. I guess that's what I mean is don't pick at your partner constantly for all these little things. Facts. Some of those things are just not worth they're just not worth it. Yeah. They're not worth argument. And there's no perfect people. There's no perfect person for you. The only perfect person for you is you. When you look in the mirror, that's the only perfect person for you. So you're still dealing with another human being that had a completely different life experience. So they're not gonna know everything after twenty years, they're not gonna know everything about you. They're not going to read your mind. It doesn't change no matter what, how many times, how long. If you're with somebody for five years, and for five years you've been telling this motherfucker, don't take your socks off at the door. And every day he come in and take his socks off at the door, he going to take his socks off at the door because that's what he's programmed to do no matter what you tell him. Well, and you've already said something and said <laughs> it a couple times. 
uh, I, I can identify with that exact situation <laughs> because this lovely person over here loves to leave his wet, stinky basketball clothes in his <laughs> basketball bag, his gym bag, for days. I feel and then I'm so tired when right he now. <laughs> then when he realizes that there's a lot of them in there <laughs> from throughout the week, those things then get thrown at the foot of the stairs. <laughs> and they stay there for a few days sometimes. Sometimes they make it up to the washer. But there are days where they just hang out down there. <laughs> and it irks me like to no end. Like Especially when I touch them and they're <laughs> damp. Ugh. And I got to carry them all the way upstairs. So my solution, uh, we've had the conversation a couple times. Always He's gotten back. a little better, but it's still happening. So <laughs> at this point, I'm problem solving. And I've actually been thinking about getting a tiny little laundry basket to put at the foot of the stairs so that at least it can go in something that I don't have to touch. Listen, you know what I've been working on doing? You know what my problem is? So sometimes you got to problem solve. No, my problem is with that. And I to thought about this the other day when I was taking the sweaty them. pants out of my thing, out of my sweaty shorts out. I was like, my problem is that I leave for the gym at 5 a.m., right? and Or 5.30, 6, whatever. And I leave and I, I take off and I put new clothes in my bag, right? And then you take to the dirty ones and put them on the floor. No, I don't. That's not what I do that. Oh, yes. Yes, you're exactly right. I'm yeah, sorry. because you're yeah, putting fresh clothes yeah. in. So you probably notice there's dirty and you take it out. Yeah, so then I'm like, okay, I'm going to put this here. I'm going to pick it up when I come back home, right? Yeah, I know. So I, I, come back, I come back home, I walk in the house, and you're like, do you want breakfast? I'm like, yeah. So I hang my bag up, and I go to talking to you, and then doing some other things, and I forget that it's there. And then I walk by it, and I'm like, oh, i got to grab that real quick. And I go upstairs, and I come back down, and I'm like, oh, i got to grab that real quick. And, and that's I, why if there was a little basket. You just don't want to touch it, right? And I, <laughs> I don't want to touch it, and I don't want this random pile of dirty clothes just in the middle of the walkway. It needs like a a home, like I am such a guy sometimes. I really am. Oh yeah, I really, like I'm really just a, like I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes I have my adolescent moments where I'm literally just I mean, a that's, fat boy. That's one of them. I feel you. We all do. We all have our moments. It's true. But I told myself that by the end of 2023, I'm gonna be out of that fucking habit because that's okay. just nasty. Okay, I can't well, be just leaving the, my maybe clothes. Maybe the now. basket will help. Maybe it will help. I just got to be more responsible. I just got to take responsibility for the fact that I keep leaving this shit in there. When I get home, I need to take my bag all the way the fuck upstairs, take everything out of it, and then put it in the fucking washing machine. Because now my bag just stinks and I can't even keep it anymore. Now I have to get rid of that bag. I told you. <sighs> I mean, that bag needs to go anyways. Like, that bag you is You could probably like, wash the bag. I'm not washing that bag. That bag is like 11. No, that bag is like 9 Why years old. Why would you not want to wash it? Because I got a fresh bag. You ain't see that gray one? That bitch is dope. Oh, well. I mean, fit my basketball in it perfectly. It's fit my shoes in it perfectly. I feel like you need like a wet bag, like a bag that that's inside of your gym bag that you throw the dirt, the, the wet stuff in, and then you take that wet bag out. Yeah, that's exactly what I need. And then it can go upstairs. That's exactly what I need. And maybe there can be multiple of them. So when you bring the one up there, you can go in the wash and then you can grab a new one. I don't know. There's a method. There's. I'm all about organization. I'm you're all not, about you. You're not as organized, and I'm very much so. I enforce it on us so that I'm all we about you organize well. me. <laughs> organize <laughs> me. Organize my life. Because <laughs> I ain't got no organization except for you. I organize everything else, though. You do. We, <laughs> all we, the business stuff is we organized. We work as a team. Yeah. I realize when people say, oh, like it's a husband and wife team. All right. So it some, is, some. but not the way that they think. Exactly. Like, She's like the house. I ain't gonna lie. The house is completely your domain. I don't know where shit is in the house half the time until I ask you. And then once I know where it is, the one thing about you is where it is, it's where it's going to be when it's put up where it's supposed to be. That is true. So I like, do like, like to have a home for everything. And yes, the there's a home for everything. And unless I do some organization, then then I'm lost again. But that only happens once a year. You only like really completely fuck change. shit up once a year. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Where the fuck is the jelly? I can't find a jelly. <laughs> I call my daughter. Where's the jelly? Oh, she moved it to quadrant three. I'm like, okay, got it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Go find a jelly. But it's great. Uh, I know if we were ever on a spaceship that you would be doing inventory. <laughs> I do inventory at the studio. Exactly. That's and why I make sure everything's supplied all the time. That's why you're an inventory person. So, y'all just seen a little bit of our 20 years right there. So what advice, I guess we don't even need to give any advice. 
at this point. Maybe we should talk about what our plans are for the next 20 years. That's what I'm about to say. See, you see, we be reading each other's minds sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. So, I, you know, you've been asking me all these questions. So I'm going to ask you the question. Where do you see us in 20 years? Oh, boom, 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 boom. Honestly, I think we're going to do a lot more traveling. Yes, absolutely. I think we're going to see a lot more places. Mm-hmm. And I hope that in within the next 20 years that Lupe and Micha, the people can help a lot of other couples um, find their 20-year partner and their 100-year partner. And like help a lot of guys that want to live similar lifestyles or just want to find happiness and be with somebody. I hope that we can help those guys and those females as well find a way to find somebody for them. Because I truly believe that there's somebody for everybody. And I think that if you're doing things in a way to find those people, that it's going to happen. And I truly believe that once you find those people, maintaining that relationship and growing that relationship is something that we could show people just through what we've gone through and through our experiences being Very together true. for so long because we've been with each other for so many phases. So we've honestly been able to analyze situations from a non-biased perspective at this point because we can look back and say, where were we? What yeah. were we doing in that what time? Were who, were, who were the people that were going through these things and what did we witness on the outside? Because we got to witness a lot of things from the outside because we were a stable place for 20 years. Mm-hmm. You know, we were the people who had a house mm-hmm. when everybody was in college and they had dorms and were staying with friends and partnered up and with all this. We had a, we a had house, a car, and a, we a had car. a job, we had yeah. a home, we had a child, we had insurance to pay all for. these this, things. Yeah. yeah, we didn't really have an irresponsible time streak really no i mean the worst irresponsible streak was when i was selling drugs for a long time and that was that was it or we or when uh they had the tax thing oh we, yeah uh, yeah <laughs> for, for our taxes. <laughs> <laughs> they had a credit for if you were gonna buy a house and at the time we should have bought a house that yeah. would have been the smart thing to do but we, did. But we were like 23 24 i want to say and we we're yeah. like oh free money okay <laughs> and we just literally lived like we had never lived in our lives and it was amazing and it was so fun and i would never take back that experience ever <laughs> because it's such an awesome learning experience Thanks. but we were reckless reckless we spent that money like <laughs> no tomorrow and oh did we pay it back the next two years <laughs> yes we did <laughs> so <laughs> the best loan ever <laughs> <laughs> so i mean we had some moments but overall we were the steady couple we were the responsible ones we were the grounded ones yeah we got to hear a lot of stories we had to be on the on the passenger side of a lot of things for a lot of people so i think yes. being in that passenger seat and seeing a lot of these things and watching these people go through things and and losing friends and and family and growing and developing and and coming out you know and being in the relationship that we're in and doing all these different things um you know having a child and and growing with her you know what i mean having you know that itself was a big thing you know i think all of those things can help us contribute over the next 20 years to help other people people. and i hope that that's what we can do like i now that we have the studio set up we can be more consistent that is our plan to definitely be more consistent with podcasts and lives and just being more available to our fans and people wh- who want to know. I, we get the questions all the time and it, time. we just don't have the, the bandwidth to just to be able to answer all of them and get to everyone. So this is such a great space for us to start doing that, kind of giving back and being a good example for what your re- relationship could be. I mean, it could be. I mean, like I said, it's not always sunny in Philadelphia. No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're at, at this point, we, I'm going to have them cut in a little piece of us arguing. Oh, my God. So I'm going to taste what it is. But, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be fun. I can't wait to share this part with you guys. We're going to do a lot more of just us talking to you guys um, as a couple. I think we also, a piece of us that we... We talk about with each other and with, like, our friends, but we don't do it as much on this platform, and I think we should. 
um, is talking about us being parents yeah. because we've been parents to newborn, toddler, a, a school age kid, and now we're about to be empty nesters. Facts. So teenager, and then now we'll soon have an adult child. Yeah. So I feel like our perception, like our perspective on parenting is very different than the normal perspective. Yeah. We look at things a little differently and we've raised our child a little bit differently. And I think that it be it would be another cool topic for future. I agree. To cover because it's not something we really get to. Facts. I'm sure there's other parents that would love to know, especially parents that are looking into being lifestyle. Facts. What was crazy is to, to answer the question, does our kid know? We'll do that on another episode. You got to wait for an, another episode. We can tell that story another day. Yeah, we definitely will. All right, man. Thanks for tuning in. It's been 20 years of Lupe and Micha. I'm Lupe. I'm Micha. And we hope to see you guys again on the next episode. Peace. Bye.